kind of piggyback on them, talk a little bit about relationships and dating because it's really fucking confusing, you know? Dating is a lot like running through a minefield, blindfolded, in the middle of a maze. If you get out the other side, you're going to be a little excited and flushed and probably a little scared, too. But if you make one wrong step, you're getting fucking blown to smithereens. <laughs> and I find it particularly challenging because I'm about as far from metrosexual as you can get. I'm what you might call a neander sexual. <laughs> when it comes to dating or fashion or women, I basically just learned to walk upright. I'm not kidding, I own four pairs of cargo shorts, one pair of jeans, and about 200 black t-shirts. <laughs> if you look in the shower at my house, there's no fancy apricot scrub or tea tree oil skin toner with sunblock. I got a bottle of shampoo that lasts me a year and a half. <laughs> and some kind of soap that I don't even know the name of. <laughs> but I figure if I can master the use of tools and discover fire eventually, I might have a fighting chance. But I do indulge in one grooming luxury. A good shave is the last bastion of manly grooming. And I'm always on the search for the perfect shave. I want a razor that has a development budget bigger than the NASA moon mission. <laughs> okay? I want to get a shave that is so close and so smooth that it feels like tiny angels came down and snipped each hair individually with little golden scissors and then massaged my face until it was as smooth and as soft as a baby's ass. I want a shaving gel that is spun from the genetically re-engineered blood of virgin albino pterodactyls. <laughs> and that quest is what led me to the sixth circle of hell. Some people call it Walmart. <laughs> That's right. I was there the other day trying to get blades for my Gillette Fusion Pulse Power X1 GT Super Wing Razor. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but buying good razor blades at Walmart is harder than unlocking the nuclear launch codes from the National Command Authority. First, you gotta search all over this giant goddamn store trying to find the one person that even knows how to get them for you. Then you wait for another 30 minutes until lights start flashing and two guys in white jumpsuits rappel down from the ceiling. They take matching keys out from their, around their necks. They crack open little plastic cards and compare the code ciphers. Then they insert the keys simultaneously and unlock the bolt. And one box of razor blades pops out. And it costs 40 fucking dollars. For $40, I ought to get the best shave of my life, a massage, and a happy ending. Then, they take that box of razor blades and they put it in a briefcase that is handcuffed to the wrist of the manager. And the manager tells me, I'll take these to register 14 or to Lawn and Garden, and you can pick them up there. What the fuck? I'm, I'm not done shopping. I've got a, a cart with a tube of toothpaste and a bottle of Advil in it. i still got shit to do. I just want the blades. It's not like I'm trying to score 30 cans of baby formula so I can cut dope or three dozen cases of Sudafed to cook meth with at my house. I just want to shave and my face to feel soft like I didn't rub it against the sidewalk for a half an hour. The ironic thing is that the old school double-edged loose blades, they're laying out all over the place. And it was all I could do not to bust a box of them open and slip my wrist while I was putting up with that bullshit. <laughs> But we do that stuff because we want to try to date. And romance is intriguing. Love, love is a lot like a transvestite in a crowded, dark, smoky bar. From a distance, it's kind of alluring and attractive. You finally screw your courage up to go over there and approach. And then all of a sudden, those last call lights pop on, right? Oh, God! And it scares the shit out of you. And there's a whole lot more to it than you expected. But I have finally figured out my place on the dating food chain. I have realized that I'm not Mr. Right. I'm not. I'm Mr. Almost Right. It's true. It's true. It's, and, and don't feel bad because I'm comfortable with that. I've come to embrace it. In fact, in these tough economic times, I have decided to turn it into a lucrative business opportunity. Ladies, are you looking for the man of your dreams? Are you looking for your soulmate, your other half? Just date me for a while. We'll have a good time, we'll have some laughs, 
There might be some hot, sweaty, freaky sex involved. I'm told that I'm pretty good at it. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just throwing that out there. If you have any questions, feel free to talk to me in the lobby after. Or you can check out the reviews when you read my website after signing up for my service. It's called matchmakingandheartbreaking.com. But it's just that easy, really. Date me for a little bit, have a good time. Before you know it, the man of your dreams will drop out of the sky. The best part about it is, you don't even have to tell me. My premium clients can avoid a messy personal confrontation and break up with me via text message. <laughs> In fact, I currently have technicians working on a breakup application for the iPhone. <laughs> yeah, it's called I'm Done. <laughs> Pretty soon for $3.99, you'll be able to kick me to the curb with a single keystroke. But the text message breakup is, is terrible. It's heartache and misery, 160 characters at a time. It's like getting invaded by a foreign army. You're walking around, minding your own business, all of a sudden, bzz, bzz, boom, your whole world explodes, right? It's total chaos. You're hammering off messages as fast as you can. You keep running out of characters, right? You have reached the maximum. Oh, shit, reload, reload, send, send. Cigarette butts are piling up around your feet like shell casings in a soldier's foxhole, but you keep banging those messages out, trying to turn the tide, and then that final sniper's bullet. Bzz, bzz. You are a great GRT guy. Can we still be, capital B, friend? Oh. Pow! Right through the heart. And it never sounds sincere, does it? No. Because asking if you can still be friends after a breakup is kind of like offering somebody an ice pack after you kicked them right in the nuts. <laughs> Anybody been dumped on Facebook? Oh, I saw a hand. I saw a hand. Facebook is the biggie. Facebook is the nuclear option of breakups. <laughs> You're hanging out, playing Farmville. <laughs> Or tagging your friends in photos and that early warning radar goes off, right? Yeah. Bong, 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 bong. Relationship status, change to single. Set DEFCON 3. What the hell? Lights are flashing like you're in the Norad bunker. More alarms go off. Bong, 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 bong. She has added a new friend. Set DEFCON 2. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. A new status pops up. She's excited about a water park vacation with her new boyfriend. And you're thinking, wait a minute. I don't, I, don't make a, I don't remember making plans for a vacation. I don't know anything about water parks. Holy shit, this is really happening. Bong, 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 bong. Race for impact. Set DEFCON 1. <laughs> Status change to in a relationship. Oh my god, here it comes. I can't avoid it. <laughs> Game over, man. <laughs> Thank you very much.